Hi, my name is Lucas Hopper, and I just wanted to do a quick video on my uh, linear actuator. I've made the, the one in red in the foreground. Um, well, first thing is, um, well, which sets it apart from other linear actuators I've seen is it allows for you the direct mounting of a Mimi 17 motor. I think that is something very nice because there's no need for you to buy a coupling. And, I mean, they are not that cheap. You can 3D print one that they don't look as well. It's good. Also, it saves a lot of room because this is very compact. And then you have um, quite a few 3D printed parts on this project. You've got the uh, end blocks, as I called them. You've got the sled, the sled table, maybe. I don't really know what you say to this. Sorry, I'm German. And then you have another one right there, of course. Well, now let's start with the um, end plates. You see oh, they're those these mounting brackets I've got four of those two on this side obviously four on the other side um, and they allow you to tighten the belt by just unscrewing those they go into the aluminum profile right here and you can just pull it out and thereby tighten the belt something rather neat and um, you may be wondering how this motor sticks to this it's actually a screw and um, I'm going to demonstrate this by um, Showing the old prototype, this isn't the actual design that is from today, but it's just what I used. And what you do is you have this, this thing, you have this, this is one of these end plates. And what you do, you can see those, you can kind of see those four holes in there, right? And those, um, those, the screw tops, they, they just slide into it. I'm just going to demonstrate that maybe, maybe it always takes a little... Um, oh, I've nearly lost one of those screws. There you go. So I've, I've lost one of the screws, but there you go. It's just set and it's in there. And then you can just mount an EMA 17 onto it, like the regular one. It just goes drops in there. Well, the thing is, you, you first you would attach the motor to the plate, and then you would drop the plate in. And uh, well, yeah, the, I think you have common sense. Uh, well, you use common sense at least more than I do. Um, now to the end plates, I've made quite a few of those. Cause I, I generally I wanted to do a whole project with those, like 3D printer. Never mind. Well, now let's just compare this to the one you see in the background here. It's a, oh, that's a lucky eBay find, as I should call it. I've got those for 50 quid, which is very, very cheap. It's High quality linear actuators by, I guess, Nadella, Germany. And it uses the same, the very same linear slide system as the one I've made. Actually, this inspired me to use this. Um, the thing is, it, it, it just looks so nice, it looks so mechanical, it's all metal. But, I mean, it's 600 quid if you, if you were to get one of those. While you can get, well, you can make this, this thing, including the motor mount. For this, you would need a motor mount. Which is probably going to be well, at least 20 quid more. You can do this and directly mount the motor for, I think, 80 bucks. And that is very, very cheap. Now, well, let's just see. Let's just focus on this part. Because, well, it's first the, the linear bearings attached to it and the belt. Let's just show you well, the, the belt attaches into it uh, in an interesting manner. As I shall demonstrate right now. Um, this is the belt, it's GT2 tone belt. And you, what you do is, um, well now that's going to be a bit complicated. <laughs> you just fold it over like this. And then you just turn this over. So now you see the, oh wait, it was the right way. Now you just push it in um, to those holes. And then what you do is just do it, plug it into there, then pull it out. Wait. And just like this, then you just pull it over and oh boy, I'm sorry about this, but I, I need to hold the camera in some sort of way. And it just just goes back into it. And then you just put a screw through there, and if you want for extra security you can put another screw in there. Now as as I told you, this isn't the a the final end block design. And you can tell because well as first as you can see it, it took Quite a lot of rework with sandpaper and knife, and 
And that was because if you 3D print parts, they always, if you, if you do a circle, they, they're never too size. This is just, this was, I think, half a mil too small. And what I've done is I've extended the, the diameter, diameter like about one millimeter. And then what I've done, I thought was very clever, was if, if, if you have the a hole right there, something like this, that was the hole. Then I have mounted from this, got three of those. I mean, they are only half a millimeter. And now you can just put the bearing in there and it just sits very nice because it's defined by those three points. But you can easily get it out of the block, which I couldn't, so I needed to drill this hole right here. This is also optional, is in a sense. Now, future designs. I mean, this is a, it's an evolving product. It's not finished yet, but it works very nice. Things I wanted to do is I, I may want to integrate one of those uh, end switches in there because that would be neat. Maybe something like this and then you have an angle like uh, so and you just have something that I don't really know. And um, also what I'm soon going to do is I'm going to upload a vid a um, truly 100% 3D printed thing which will actually means that you don't have to use those metal end plates, which I think is generally neat. Yeah. Well, that's it, I guess, from my linear end actuator. But if you want to see it crash, I may turn the power on one more time. Well, yeah, that's it. Bye, and, um, well, make one of those. They are great.